welcome to the gate ladies and gentlemen today we will be doing the loop of Henle secretion and excretion so in our previous videos on excretion we have talked all about uh, processes such as glomerular filtration tubulary absorption and now we're at the loop of Henle so most of the people get confused at what processes take place at the loop of Henle but then just to remind you remember that um, here this is the glomerulus, uh, this is the Bowman's capsule. So here at the Malpighian body at this region that I'm circling here with black, there is glomerular filtration as a process that takes place. So remember that uh, the, the filtrate that is produced during glomerular filtration, we say it's known as a glomerular filtrate. So remember that um, when, the, when the smaller dissolved waste products and substances leave the blood here at the glomerulus they go into the bowman's capsule right and then um, they actually form what we call a glomerular filtrate and because the glomerular filtrate contains um, contains even useful product products such as glucose those products need to be reabsorbed back into the blood so i'll just do a bit of a zoom in here just to let you see what's happening so here at this point you can see that uh, where, where my little hand is here there is a glomerular filtrate this glomerular filtrate moves 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 and then it gets reabsorbed here at the proximal convoluted tubule so at the proximal convoluted tubule uh, the nutrients such as glucose and vitamins will be reabsorbed into the surrounding blood capillaries so what we form is now known as a tubular filtrate so it's a glomerular filtrate just when it comes from the glomerulus here but then when reabsorption already taken place it becomes a tubular filtrate hence i've shown this arrow here let um, me just uh, zoom out i've shown this arrow here this arrow shows that this is a tubular filtrate so this tubular filtrate gets into this set of things known as the loop of Henle or you can say it's handless loop so the handless loop consists of a descending limb this is the descending limb as well as this which is an ascending limb so now um, the tubular filtrate will enter the loop of Henle and some set of processes will occur there so the loop of Henle is just basically this area which I have circled here with black so that is your loop of Henle it is called a descending limb as well as an ascending limb these are just peritubular capillaries or the blood capillaries that are surrounding the loop of Henle. So remember that the loop of Henle is also part of the renal tubule. So uh, the processes that okay at the loop of Henle, let's just look at this figure. This is showing that uh, this is the filtrate that is coming from the proximal convoluted tubule. So this is coming from them, the proximal convoluted tubule so the proximal convoluted tubule will have that tubular uh, filtrate then it will enter the loop of Henle so this is the descending limb this is the filtrate that is descending at the loop of Henle so what is the function of this loop of Henle so the loop of Henle's main function is to ensure that water in the filtrate is conserved so when you're saying that water is conserved it means that water will be saved or water will not be lost so in this way um, the filtrate that is in this uh, in this tube, this uh, the, this loop of Henle, will not lose water because um, first uh, the, this loop of Henle is impermeable to water, meaning that the walls, the walls of this pipe or this tube or this loop of Henle, its walls are impermeable to water. They block the movement of water. They do not allow water to leave the loop of Henle. So in that way, water in this uh, tubular filtrate is conserved so this is two marks basically when they say explain what is the main function of the loop of Henle it is to ensure that water in the filtrate is conserved and um, you, you have to mention that uh, the loop of Henle is has got walls that are impermeable to water that do not allow water to leave the filtrate that is why water is conserved at the loop of Henle so the other thing that happens here at the loop of Henle is the filtrate is traveling here at the ascending limb. Uh, salt is actively pumped out of the loop into the renal medulla, making it to be hypertonic. So another process that takes place at the loop of Henle is when salt, uh, salt leaves the filtrate. So remember the filtrate is just the, the, the fluid that we have had 
that has waste products and all of that so here salt that is in this fluid will leave the what will leave the filtrate or the tubular filtrate and then it will move into the medulla region of the of the kidney the renal medulla remember that the nephron is uh, in a renal pyramid right so the nephron is in a renal pyramid so this part is actually specifically at the renal medulla so when the salt leaves the loop of Henle here it is pumped out into the medulla region so this will make the medulla region to be salty so we use a scientific name hypertonic hypertonic means that the medulla region is now salty because all the salt has been pumped out of the field right into the medulla region such that uh, the, 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 the medulla region becomes very salty hypertonic so when it is hypertonic uh, we can just describe um, that salt and water have got opposite effects so when there is more salt there will be less water so the medulla when we say that it is hypertonic when we say that it is hypertonic it means it has got more salt and less water and the opposite of hypertonic is hypotonic when you say something is hypotonic it means it has got more water, um, more water and less salt so in this case the medulla becomes hypertonic it has got more salt because salt is being pumped out from the uh, from this tubular filtrate and then this salt will fill in the medulla region causing it to be hypertonic so you need to also mention this process that happens at the loop of handle and then less water will be on the medulla i've already said that when something has got more salt it means that it will have less water when you say it's hypertonic so there is less water at the medulla uh, causing a steep gradient to develop between the filtrate and the medulla region so the thing of uh, a gradient remember it exists when we've got uh, a difference in concentrations so basically in simple terms are trying to say that there is more so um, there is more water in the filtrate than at the what than at the medulla here at the medulla there is less water whereas in the filtrate there is more more water why do we say there's more water because uh, the, the loop of Henle conserves the water right so they, they uh, would develop what you call a what a pressure gradient so when you say that um well uh, there is a gradient let's just say there's a gradient but when you say that there's a gradient it just means at the at one side there is more of something at the other side there's less of something in this case in the filtrate there is more water because water has conserved whereas at the medulla region there is less water so we we'll say that there's a steep gradient when you're talking about a steep gradient it just means that there is more on one side and less on the other side so there is a when you say a gradient you're just talking about a big difference so there's a big difference between the filtrate and the medulla region that is what is meant here by point three that less water is on the medulla causing a steep gradient to develop between the filtrate and the medulla region so the collecting ducts, um, the collecting ducts, remember here at the, at the nephron, these are the collecting ducts. This is a collecting duct, collecting duct, as well as uh, this is a distal convoluted tubule, distal convoluted tubule. So the collecting duct, this pipe that is straight, as well as this uh, distal convoluted tubule, they are very permeable to water unlike the loop of Henle. So if they are very permeable to water, then that water will actually leave from the what? From the distal convoluted tubule and it will move into the medulla so that the medulla will become normal again. Remember that uh, we have said that uh, the medulla has got less water because there is more salt that is being pumped into it from the loop of Henle. But to balance this out the collecting ducts and the distal convoluted tubule will be very permeable to water such that they allow the water to move back into the medulla and as the water moves back into the medulla then uh, the, the water will eventually go back to the blood in a way so the water as it moves back into the medulla it will end up going back into this blood all the way from the distal convoluted tubule as well as the collecting duct because they are permeable to water but the loop of Henle is not permeable to water hence it pumps out a lot of salt and does not let water go only the, 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 the distal convoluted tubule allow water to move from them from itself into the medulla region to 
balance out this thing remember that because there is less water when there's an imbalance in their body remember homeostasis says when there's an imbalance in their body they need something to balance it so in this case there is less water at the medulla region so the water needs to leave the distal convoluted tubule as well as the collecting ducts and go back into the medulla region so that is what happens basically at the loop of ender. But then uh, specifically for the loop of ender, you can just take point 0.1, point 0.2, yes, and point 0.3. These are the most important things that water is conserved. So it is pumped out as well as there is a steep gradient between, between, the, um, between the medulla region and the tubular filtrate. So now the other process that is involved here in this uh, whole thing of urine formation is tubular secretion. So tubular secretion is one more process uh, whereby there is a, there's an active removal of unnecessary substances from the blood in the peritubular capillaries into the tubular filtrate in the distal convoluted tube. So what actually happens here, if we go back to our nephron diagram, so here if i just make space and go back to our nephron diagram we will note that um here at the distal convoluted tubule there will be what there will be this filtrate that is moving into what into this um into this collecting duct and in the blood here remember there is blood here in this peritubular capillaries right the peritubular capillaries are carrying blood so if that blood still has got some unnecessary substances you know like Although waste is filtered here at the glomerulus, not all the waste is filtered. So some of the waste may remain in the blood. So the process of tubular secretion just means that the waste that is here in the blood will move into the what? Into the distal convoluted tubule. Back into the distal con convoluted tubule. So we're talking about uh, things such as creatinine, such as drugs, all of that, all of that. They will have to be excreted out of the blood because they are not healthy for the body. So that is why they have to live from this from the blood in the peritubular capillaries and into the what? Into the distal convoluted tubule. So the process is known as tubular secretion whereby there is an active removal of those unnecessary student um, substances from the blood in the peritubular capillaries into the tubular filtrate in the distal convoluted tubule. So uh, if they can say examples of those unnecessary su substances that are removed, you can say drugs and then you can use something like creatinine, all of those uh, yeah, so if you are taking drugs, the drugs, the chemicals that are in those drugs will have to be removed from the blood through a process called tubular secretion. So now when this all happens now, that is when our urine is formed. So now the final thing uh, in this process is now called excretion of urine. So in your excreting urine now, what actually happens here? I remember that um, here uh, now tubular secretion has taken place and... Um, and the unnecessary substances have moved from the blood and they are now back into the what? They are now back into the distal convoluted tubule. They are now back into this filtrate. So when this filtrate moves into the collecting duct, when it moves here into this collecting duct, we now call this substance urine. So the urine that we excrete in our toilet every time, it is formed in these processes. So the first process is glomerular filtration, the one that takes place at the glomerulus, whereby the blood is filtered or smaller dissolved substances will move into the Bowman's capsule. The second process takes place at the proximal convoluted tubule, whereby um, whereby the, 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 the nutrients that are in this glomerular filtrate are reabsorbed back into the blood. And then the third process is known as um, is, the, is the one that we did right now, which is tubular secretion. Tubular secretion whereby unnecessary uh, substances that are in the blood are secreted into the what? Into the filtrate here at the distal convoluted tubule. And then the fourth process is excretion whereby the urine here will live through the collecting ducts. So that is excretion. So during excretion, we need to look at the composition of urine. The urine that we excrete is composed of urea. It is composed of excess water as well as salt. So in a question that can say, uh, state, state the composition of urine or things that make up urine, you can talk of urea, you can take of excess salt, excess water as well as salt.
that is why when you drink a lot of water you will urinate that much because um, the, 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 the water is being excreted right so this urine moves from all collecting ducts to the renal pelvis remember we have said that um, the urine will collect here at the what at the collecting ducts that's why we say this is a collecting duct because it is collecting urine so as the urine is collected here it will move from all those um, all those collecting ducts into this region known as the renal pelvis remember the nephrons are here at the at the renal pyramids right the nephrons are here so when these collecting tubules collect together they just they just like um they just throw the urine here at the what at the renal pelvis the urine will just move here at the renal pelvis from the collecting ducts and then when the urine is now at the renal pelvis it will have to move into the ureter and to the bladder and when it reaches the bladder you will have to excrete it so if you do not understand some of the concepts such as the bladder such as the nephron i strongly recommend you to rewind back on our videos because they might be of help and i hope that these sessions have been helpful to you and good luck for any test that you may write god bless